Welcome to Metaphysical Soul Speak. I'm your host, Elena Fox Starks. Hey guys, I hope you are doing well. Today is Sunday, almost the very end of Sunday as I'm recording this. I've been without internet for hours. I, well, I hope this works. I did say if you don't hear from me on any given day, it's because I'm dead. Now I'm going to revise that. (laughs) I don't want you guys to think I died. Uh, If you don't hear from me, it might be that we've been hit by a massive coronal ejection from the sun. And maybe the internet's out. (laughs) I, I know that we were hit with one yesterday, finally reached Earth. But I can't get any information on it because of, well, internet's been down. I am recording this hoping that, (laughs) hoping that I'm going to be able to upload it. A lot of self-identity stuff uh, coming up for people today still. Um, Like a friend of mine complained for like the sixth or seventh time about himself being sick. And I said, you know, maybe you should try um, going on disability because you seem to be sick a lot. And he got really mad at me. And he's like, why would you say that? I'm hardly ever sick. I'm super healthy. And I'm like, you're complaining to me like every week since I've met you. You know what I mean? And I, you know, it's like, I didn't mean to attack his personality or his whatever, his identity. He thinks of himself as healthy, but he's constantly complaining to me. And part of me wonders if he's not just trying to play the victim and get me manipulated into feeling sorry for him because maybe he's a narcissist. That's what narcissists do. Uh, one type is to be the victim. So I'm like, well, I'm not going to, you know, fall for that. And he keeps trying to ask me to be his girlfriend. And I'm like, oh yeah, sorry. You live with your mom and you're constantly sick. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I don't know. It just doesn't sit right with me somehow. But I've had... um just really like strange like my friends are behaving strangely some of them one of them who never drinks got super drunk yesterday and kept asking me how I am and you know and I I don't know if he's having an identity crisis or what but it was very strange it's really unlike him he's been acting weird a lot of people have been acting weird and I think we're just all bombarded by all this energy the cosmic energy and then now we're working on the third chakra stuff and if you could do it right if we could all do it right if I could do it right we should be clear of all the identity crisis related issues should be cleared up I think by tomorrow midnight Monday midnight time it just um, it's one of those weird things that we're going through but as we seem to be working on various parts of each you know each chakra um, I think the next one will be the heart. And when that energy comes through, I'll let you know more about that. It's um really, really crazy. I feel like there's a bleed over already for me. The identity thing for me ties a little bit into love and not having love. And the love that I had in the past, a lot of times turned out to be with men that were narcissists that I did not know at the time. Now that I've studied it, I know what to look for and how to prevent it. (laughs) But as you, most of you know, is that when you are um, an empath, especially a serious empath, you tend to attract serious narcissists. It's like your exact polar opposite. So, um, you know, I'm trying to deal with that. I mean, I'd rather just be with an empathic guy now. I don't want to be with any more narcissists. I would rather be alone than to be with a narcissist or someone trying to take advantage of me in one way or another, you know. And I hope that you feel the same way about yourselves. Like, if you are single and you're looking, look into narcissism and try to avoid that if possible. You know, obviously sociopaths and psychopaths avoid them too. But, um, you know, you have, you know, you have to define yourself um, as your own person outside of a relationship and... I always was trying to identify myself as part of the couple I was in at the moment. And then who are we? How do we define ourselves as a couple? And 
I was always doing that, you know. There's all these weird myths surrounding that. You know, the two become one. And even there's that candle ceremony where there's two candles and then you light the one candle. And then that's the symbol that you're now one unit. And then you have to blend your everything, your bank account, your house, your cats, pets. If you have kids, you know, everything gets blended into one thing. And it's the idea is really beautiful, but also your identity kind of gets enmeshed in that other person. So um, if you ever had that situation in the past, even if you're divorced now or no longer in the relationship, it's like that other person, you, you have to un enmesh yourself from that other person and the situation. And it really like your identity and ego take a big freaking hit from it. So that's something that a lot of people are going through. Um, knowing who you definitely are in a couple. And if you're together with that person, like, you know, five, six, seven, 10, 20 years. And now you're outside of that. You're, it's like you just lost half of yourself and you've got to regain who you are as a person first. Um, I've been going that through that for seven years. I totally know who I am outside of another human. And I have the, the fear of getting involved with somebody and losing myself again. And I don't know, pretty much watch, eat, pray, love. And you'll know what I'm going through. I swear that woman wrote directly from my brain, wrote that book, but, or, you know, and then the movie was made from the book. But anyway, I just want you guys to be aware of some more um, issues surrounding that because it's pretty, um, you know, I warned you on Friday it was going to start happening. And then also the gut stuff, the intestinal and, um, digestive system stuff that's still going on pancreas um liver um just stuff in your you know your general gut region you know i spent hours today with my kid who has intestinal um uh like a bug like some kind of a flu and he's having a lot of pain so <laughs> several hours and a hundred dollars later <laughs> but to be fair, I did buy myself some lactobacillus acidophilus um, tablets at the pharmacy in this clinic. You have to go to a pharmacy to buy buy that. You know, in the U.S., you go to any health food store. But here in South America, you can't get lactobacillus, like, you know, the good bacteria for your gut. You can't even get probiotics um, unless you buy kombucha that people grow and then they will give you like a, a glass of it in the health food stores. They'll just pour a glass out of a big jar. Um, and there are three companies that will sell kombucha, but I think they might be imported. And then, and then the other you know thing is yogurt and that's about it. It's very rare to come across anything probiotic. You can't just go to the grocery store or the health food store here to grab a bottle of, you know, of acidophilus like you can in the U S. So if you're in the U S or any of the Western nations, you're very lucky. And I suggest you do that. That will improve and increase your immune system and, um, get rid of candida and all kinds of stuff. But, um, so I had to buy that today. And I also bought some digestive enzymes again at the pharmacy. Cause it's not just readily available in health food stores. In fact, most of the health food stores that are here, well, I, I, I was going to say we're owned by Gringos, but that's not true. Now they think about it. Now there's whole chains that are um, Ecuadorian owned. And, but it's, the health food stores are different. Like they will sell vitamins and, but they, they tend to sell just like organic uh, food products. But as far as like aromatherapy is kind of hard to come by. Someone told me the other day of a good store I have to go to that will have it, but but um, there's a lot of stuff. I'm, I'm missing a lot of stuff. You know, I just wish I could take a trip, you know, just call a lift and go on over to the health food store and grab everything I need for the week. And I just, I don't have what I used to have. So I do miss Detroit for that and San Francisco, Berkeley area for that. But um, even in LA, God, I had all kinds of health food stores. Follow Your Heart is one of the best ones in the Valley. It was my favorite place. Um, and SNS Produce up in Chico, California was another 
we, in fact, my son and I were just talking about it today because literally we bought everything we needed in that store. We didn't have to shop anywhere else except if we ran out of money, then we'd have to go to the cheap grocery store, like one of the warehouse stores. <laughs> but usually we were always at, at S&S Produce. But I'm feeling better today, but still having a lot of pain in my intestinal stomach area. It's just like, it feels like a fist of fury. <laughs> it just stuck in my stomach and it's like, uh, it's like, uh, it's in my actual stomach and I'm, I hope I don't have an ulcer. That's like my biggest concern because of the H. pylori, but I'm working through it. I hope that if you guys have stomach issues and intestinal issues right now that you're able to work through it pretty quickly, but don't hesitate to see a doctor if you have to. And as you know, especially in the Western world now, you could just go online and see a doctor online. Um, I actually had a doctor in Montana that anytime I needed anything, usually I would get sick late at night. I would just call her at three in the morning. She worked the night shift and she would um, call in prescriptions for me and I would just take a taxi over and get my prescription because she didn't do much more than what my doctor locally would have done but to get in to see your doctor locally you have to do it during the day and usually I I, when every time I got sick it was always at night so I don't know I'm a night owl I do everything at night including work so (laughs) but it's cool that there's that service I have a feeling that things are going to get better oh and speaking of better the future for us holds quite a bit and that's what my topic tonight is going to be about. Um, I wish I could read to you the Schumann Resonance news though, because earlier back when I had internet, um, oh wait, wait, no, it says it's okay. Maybe it is. It looks like it's finally loading. I've been waiting for hours for this to load. Okay. Our Ascension Symptoms scale, um, tonight is still 99 riding really high tons of energy um for me i've been having that thing where you just get so sleepy and you pass out for an hour you wake up refreshed like what happened i always wonder if i hop timelines but um i don't know i've had a lot of different tones in my ears woke up this morning with um oh about about an inch south of my uh, mastoid process, which is the bone that, that's um, round that's behind your ear, but, you know, on my right hand side below my mastoid process, I I have another uh, injection site, and it's like got I've got like a um, like literally it's like a scab. I was injected in the middle of the night. I think I was abducted again. I don't know what the hell they're doing, but. I hope it's helping me get through the ascension. You know, it'd be cool if it's helping me get through it faster. Yeah, and the Schumann Resonance just is not going... I I just, it's like I'm not going to be able to report on it, maybe. I will record the show, and then if I can, I'll, I'll come back and record a third segment about the Schumann Resonance. But I did read it earlier, and it said, um, before the evening report, that... There were many um, peaks and valleys in the Schumann Resonance, but the highest one was 69 hertz. And we have had up and down activity, like solid walls of activity, now for over 24 hours. That's what I remember anyway. So, and then after that, it resided back a little bit to normal. We don't know what it's going to be, you know, like what it's right now until they record it. But, um, they are UTC time is five hours ahead of me so they usually record the morning report about 5 30 in the morning or 6 a.m here my time so well I don't know we'll see hopefully I'll have the internet and I could see um I might have to upload two episodes of this show tomorrow if the internet isn't fixed until then but Fingers crossed, legs crossed, everything crossed, eyes, eyes are crossed, <laughs> that I get it, that I get it out <laughs> on time. But anyway, um, so that's what I can remember, at least. I know we were up to 69 hertz 
frequency on the Schumann resonance. Anyway, uh, tonight's topic is going to be controversial and pretty intense, maybe, for some of you. (laughs) But I have been just obsessed with this guy. Um, I've been studying a lot of the things that he says. I think he seems credible, but... I don't know. I I think he seems credible, to be honest. And I'm going to tell you all the reasons why. But when we come back after this quick break, I'm going to tell you the story of time traveler Noah. And if he is ever (laughs) listening to the show, I would for sure love to interview you, Noah, if you're listening um, in the future, um, I, I want to, I want to have a live interview with you. Um, I find this topic to be incredibly fascinating. I've always been obsessed with, uh, time travel, this idea. So when we come back, we're going to go over time traveler, Noah, who comes from the year 2030 and he has been uploading many many videos on apex tv to tell the world all about time travel when we're going to have it when when did he start etc etc after this Hey you, have you ever thought about having your own podcast like me? Was it even a New Year's resolution? For me, it sure was. But as I've been looking into this for months, I was daunted. There's so many questions I had. When I was trying to get this off the ground, I was wondering, how do I record the episode? How do I get it across all the platforms? How do I get my podcast on Apple podcasts when I don't even have an iPhone. How do I get it onto Spotify and all the other places? How do I get people to listen? And how do I make money from my podcast? How do I edit it? Oh my God. I I had all these questions and I was so confused until I discovered the simple, simple answer is anchor. Anchor is a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing your podcast. Best of all, it's 100% free, and it is ridiculously easy to use. And now Anchor can match you with great sponsors, too, so you can get paid to podcast. All you need to do is record it. You don't have to go out and look for people to advertise on your show they help you so basically what I like about podcasting is I don't have to have a video of myself you don't know if my hair is dirty or if I'm still in my pajamas or even if I'm wearing makeup (laughs) haha and it's so easy I could do this from the comfort of my own home in my living room using this amazing app right from my cell phone so easy right so if you've always wanted to start your own podcast and make money by the way doing it please go to anchor.fm forward slash start That is anchor.fm slash start to join me and the diverse community of podcasters that are already using Anchor. Again, that's anchor.fm forward slash start. I can't wait to hear your podcast and I can't wait to favorite you. Woohoo! Let's be broad, let's be broadcast podcast buddies. (laughs) I'll see you there. When I was a kid, it was H.G. Wells' The Time Machine. 
one of the most incredible stories and incredible movies. It set my head on fire. <laughs> I was so excited about the concept of traveling back into the past, forward into the future. I mean, I want to see the flying cars, cities. I want to see the dinosaurs. Everybody, everybody knows that these are the things that are going to happen, right? And we all know that dinosaurs did exist, and but we don't know what they looked like. You know, did they have feathers? Were they purple? We don't know. We don't know. I don't believe they're the large, scaly lizards only. They think they think the Tyrannosaurus rex is related to the chicken. Well, it would be super terrifying, but I'd love to go back in time and see the super chickens. <laughs> That is the T-Rex. It would be absolutely terrifying. <laughs> I mean, this, you know, I made my my son actually made chicken soup for himself tonight. I brought him I went out and got all the ingredients. He said he would make it for himself and he did because he felt like he wanted to cook tonight and it'd be really terrifying to know that <laughs> giant chickens have human soup when they get sick, you know. <laughs> I don't know. I just but it's something I'd like to see. It'd be interesting. But I have been obsessed. I mean, every story I could ever get my hands on, I've been watching. Um, more modern day movies are The Time Traveler's Wife, which is an incredible book that I read. It is an incredible movie. <sighs> It's just incredible. And the uh, movie about time, about a man who, in his genetic code, can time travel. <laughs> and his dad tells him what the rules are, what to do and what not to do. There's always rules, aren't there, when it comes to time traveling. There's always, you know, paradoxes. You know, can you change the past? Does that affect the future? What happens? You know, um, there's a lot of speculation when it comes to this stuff. It's uh, mind-numbingly exciting. I don't know. Just <sighs> There's nights I can't sleep when I think about this. So I'm going to tell you... I went over a 40 minute video of Noah's story and then I, I've listened to hours and hours of him talking about various things and I think in the upcoming weeks I'm going to do even more research because he has about five to six up to ten hours maybe of live footage from YouTube. He goes live with Apex TV quite often. Um, he's stuck. He, he got fired from his job and he's stuck here. <laughs> and so he's just like, screw it. I'm going to do everything I can to tell people about this. He thinks that it's wrong that we don't know about time travel being a real thing yet. Now there's been people all over I mean, all over, coast to coast, AO, when Art Bell was alive, even now with George Nori, there are a lot of people who've come forward to claim to be time travelers. And there's a lot of people on Apex TV, not just Noah, but I'm going to talk about him particularly tonight. In upcoming weeks, I plan to have episodes in which I give predictions about the future from other time travelers that sound credible to me. There was one or two that didn't sound terribly um, credible, but it's, it's just something that you got to take with a grain of salt and you've got to use your logic and discernment. And if you think it's real, if you think it's uh, true, you know, I, I, I mentioned him a few times in the past. He did say that this past few months there was going to be a really, really dangerous snow, snowstorm. And he was telling the truth. He said it like about eight or nine months ago. And it happened. It was a pretty big deal. The polar vortex, it came through a couple different times through the United States. I mean, dumped like a foot of snow in Michigan. 
you know, it was pretty bad. I don't know if it was as bad as he said, though. He said it was going to be a really big, big, big storm. So the other thing is when it comes to time travel, you know, we're hopping dimensions all the time, side dimensions, parallel universes. And then to go back in time, possibly that breaks you off from your first original timeline. Plus now we're hopping timelines. So not just dimensions and going back and forth in time. Like we are literally hopping from different to different timelines. So the stuff he says, you got to take it with a grain of salt. It may or may not happen. I believe it did happen. I believe it happened on his timeline. <laughs> and it's possible it may or may not happen on ours. The one we're on now or the one we'll be on tomorrow. Cause we might be on a new one tomorrow. <sighs> we're multidimensional beings and it's, it's, it's hard to know all of this. It's, it's hard to wrap your head around it is what it is. It's incredible. There was a guy who was trying really hard to build a time machine in, uh, oh gosh, about 12 years ago in, in Mad Man Markham. Do you guys remember that? Did you ever listen to Coast to Coast AM with Art Bell? I mean, Art Bell was on the air like almost 50 years and he, maybe more, you know, roughly 50 years. And it was literally, he was the number one talk show host in the world for decades, almost half a century. So um, anyway, this guy called repeatedly, you know, to tell him what's going on. And he got, he got put in jail for, sneaking um, power from the electric company and I think he caused a plaque out and he ended up going to the county jail for 10 months or something. <laughs> Art Bell was supposed to do an interview with him and he wasn't answering so he had to do something else for the show. <laughs> and then we came out of jail he's like, so this is what happened and he had gotten so much power um, that he thinks he, he was getting close to doing it and Art's like well what are you going to do I mean you're on, now you're on probation what are you going to do and he's like I'm going to keep going and he um, he did and, and then no one ever heard from him again after a while it was just like suddenly he's gone and we don't know if he died <laughs> no one knew and then a couple years later someone said that a mysterious man appeared on the beach and he kind of fit the description of Mad Mad Markham or maybe it was like, it was a couple years later, someone saw it in the paper from like 40 years in the past. It was this guy described as Madman Markham, but the name wasn't used in the paper. No one knew who the guy was or where he came from. So that was always like one of those points of speculation. We're like, oh man, oh, whatever happened to Madman Markham? And then John Titor came about and he claimed that he was stuck. Um, he's a time traveler. So there's a lot of famous people now that are time travelers or supposedly time travelers. We don't know for sure, but then there was a guy who showed us a picture of himself as a child and showed us a picture of Abraham Lincoln getting ready to speak. And there he is as a child standing in front of Abraham Lincoln because he was a time traveler as a child and he went back in time to see Abraham Lincoln speak. So, I mean, there's weird, and there's a lot of anomalous uh, photographs out there as well regarding time travel. There's a lady clearly holding a cell phone talking in the background of a Charlie Chaplin movie. Um, I mean, if you look these up, they will blow your mind. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of stuff like that. I mean, the guy holding a guy holding um, a camera before cameras uh, well it wasn't obviously before cameras was invented because there was a picture of it but the kind of camera he was holding <laughs> was like a pretty new one back when cameras were new and so he was in the background and then there was, and he's like wearing like a t-shirt and shorts and his hair is all stylish and cool and all the men around him were wearing suits and um, hats and ties. So he like stood out like a sore thumb. And then there's another picture of 
um, a woman taking a video of a fight that took place before cell phones existed in Las Vegas. I remember that fight. Um, I now I can't remember the, who who was boxing. It was a boxing match. I remember when I was a little girl. Um, my family really loved boxing, and we we get together sometimes with my uncle Jerry, and we would watch boxing with him. And ironically, my aunt ma- my aunt was married to him, and then divorced him, and then married a famous boxer. <laughs> Uh, golden boy Art Aragon is, is God rest his soul I am mean, God rest all their souls they've all passed now but golden boy Art Aragon the original golden boy Mexican boxer that's my uncle yeah, that's my uncle I spent a lot of time at uh, his bail bonds when he retired you know and he was best friends with Marilyn Monroe back in the day and he was pretty famous. He was a pretty famous dude, but that was my uncle. But, but I remember watching that, that boxing match with my family and my aunt and uncle <laughs> before they divorced. And I don't remember seeing that lady in that footage, but she went back in time clearly and took that. And someone got a picture of her taking that picture or taking the foot, you know, taking the video. So I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of stuff to do with time travel that just... It, it just, it's one of those things that keeps me up at night. I can't sleep for days sometimes thinking about this stuff. <laughs> I cannot wait to get my hands on the world's first time machine available to the public. <laughs> I want, I don't want to keep doing it with my mind. I have done it with my mind several times. I know how, but I want to do it physically with a machine. I don't know why. It just seems more real somehow. Anyway, time traveler Noah. He was in high school in the year 2030. So he basically, um, he, he basically was just like a normal kid, you know, he, he speaks in slang terms. He's kind of just a normal person. He did get very high marks in school. He got straight A's. He had a strange look about him. Um, if you see him on Apex TV, they blur out his face because to keep his anonymity. But he um, he just he told he told the world that he had kind of a deformity, you know, or he looks strange, so people assume he's stupid. And he got bullied and teased a lot, and so that made him work harder at school. He ended up getting straight A's, and. He's always been very emotionally open. He seems to be an empath, in my opinion, from watching his videos. He will break down and cry at the drop of a hat, which is a unique ability to understand the emotions of others and to feel deeply like that. So one day after he graduated from high school, these uh, (laughs) men in suits, three men, came up in suits and said uh, we think you're special and we would like to give you a job would you mind taking a bus ride out to the desert (laughs) I think if uh, three men in suits came up to me and asked me that question I'd tell them to well, you know what? Go, you know what yourself, because no, sorry. I'm not going out in the middle of the desert. Not with you. Sorry, that kind of freaks me out. But time traveler Noah didn't really know what was going on, but he thought, hey, cool, I'm going to get a job. He was 18. So he gets on a bus. They gave him a free bus ticket. And the <laughs> And he just remembers seeing desert and desert and desert and desert. He was in Nevada. I mean, he took a bus all the way to Nevada from wherever he came from, which he can't really say. And he just remembers it was so much desert. And it was the first time he'd ever seen, you know, Nevada. And it kind of freaked him out a little bit. And he gets there and there's other people about the same age as him. And they don't know why they're there. They just know that they're they're going to be given a job. 
and they're called the new recruits. <laughs> and so these are like his crew now, you know? And so they started to do this like little, um, orientation and they still didn't know what was going on. And they said, well, you're going to be given your, um, your, um, basically your, uh, bunk beds in rooms and they were metal bunk beds. They weren't very comfortable. And they had one little carpet in each room and they had a wooden wardrobe and they were given uniforms that were pretty ugly and uncomfortable, kind of scratchy on the skin. And then they were also given, um, recreational clothing. But what was weird about this clothing was there was no labels on it. So it didn't say Abercrombie and Fitch or JC Penney. It just had no labels, had nothing. And even the jeans, so plain blue jeans with no label, no ID on it, and uh, white T-shirts. And that, that was called their quote-unquote recreational clothing. So they got familiar with where they're going to be living, and they were promised a whole lot of money. They were promised big money. So they're all pretty excited about that. But, um, in the end, it turned out that all he provided was food and shelter and a minimum wage. So it was the government lying. Oh my God. What a surprise, right? Government still lying in 2030. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> time traveler. No, I think he might've been considered special because he is Czechoslovakian by birth, but then grew up in the U.S. His parents naturalized, and he became a U.S. citizen. And he didn't learn how to speak Czechoslovakian, but in their home, his parents spoke Russian fluently as well as English. And so because he knows two languages, that might have been something that made him special. So basically... After everyone kind of got oriented in this program, they took him down uh, these stairs into an underground bunker. And in the underground bunker, there was, um, even though it was in the desert and there's like wind is blowing and there's sand everywhere, it was super clean. The staircase was really clean. And they, and they go down under the ground and he walked into this enormous room and there was this huge glass time machine and they said basically this is a time machine and they're like what like oh my god we're gonna time travel this is really weird okay and <laughs> this is so cool and even though time machine you know time travel had been around for a couple of years they didn't realize there was like literally jobs with the government doing time travel research and experiments and he wasn't terribly familiar with it. He knew that it was still kind of expensive and the prices started to come down in, um, the, in the uh, public sector where you can time travel. In the year 2028, we're going to be able to start time traveling, but it's very expensive. So he knew a couple people who had done it, but he didn't know anyone um, doing it, doing that regularly. And he just kind of was like, well, <laughs> when I could afford it, I'll do it. So for him, this was like this big deal. Like, oh my gosh, I'm now I'm like probably in area 51, you know, they probably don't call it that anymore, but you now he's an underground bunker learning all about time travel. So anyway, they had a classroom and they had to go to class every day and they learned about the basics of time travel. They talked about paradoxes and how not to, mingle with the people that you're in, you know, don't interact with the people that are around you just to kind of go about your day. And they taught them deception techniques, how to deceive people so they don't suspect you're from the future. And some of the people he suspected actually were very good at lying. He had to be trained how to lie, but a lot of people were, um, already good at that. And that might've been what made them special and stand out. Um, he said, basically they handed him a booklet and after a while, after they did all their studying, um, they took a test and when they passed their test, they were given a chip embedded in their left wrist that would allow them to time travel. 
very easily without any um, outside proof or evidence that that's what they were doing. So he said that they they told him the chip was going to hurt, but and it would probably hurt for about a week. He said it hurt so bad that he actually passed out from it and he lost consciousness. It was an inc- it took a while, like maybe more than a week to stop hurting and eventually got embedded fully into his system and then he was okay and it didn't hurt him anymore. But um it made him the very first time that they actually took the whole recruits, they lined them up against a wall and they weren't really sure what happened. But next thing they know, they all got, they were all feeling lightheaded and very dizzy and they fell against the ground. He said, he's like, I fell, I felt dizzy and lightheaded. And, and then the man said, okay, recruit, stand up. Now, you know, time travels real. And they're like, what do you mean? We know that it's like the same exact, we're in the same exact room. And they said, well, now you're in the year 2009. From 2030 to 2009, and they were like, what? Like, they didn't believe it. And the only thing that was different was there's less people walking around this underground warehouse. And that was the only thing that was different. But they let them stay there for a week to kind of acclimate uh, their bodies to being back in the past because... Remember, I've talked to you guys about um, going back in the past. You have to go counterclockwise and down and lower in vibration. That's what I was taught. So it's uh, it is a lower vibration. So you have to get used to being in a different vibratory rate. And then think about it: if twenty thirty is in the fifth dimension, then. 2009 is in the third that must have made him very sick (laughs) I mean the energy of the 3D compared to the 5D is it's pretty massive so okay so basically during that week it was pretty boring they just treated the time travelers almost like slaves like they were not very nice to them they were actually pretty rude and they just made them move boxes in the hot desert sun and um, cleaning just m- manual labor menial labor they like didn't have them do a lot of time travel at first you know they just sent them in the past to do some work uh, that anyone could have done and it wasn't what he had signed up for so he was kind of irritated it seems like when he was describing it but He did see that there were, in the past, in 2009, that there were other ways of time travel. There were domes, and and they looked really kind of cool, but really old. And those forms of time travel involved great amounts of radiation and could radiate the person who's traveling in time. And so they had to develop new and improved ways of time travel that would be safe for the public someday. So there was a lot of different things in this old warehouse, like in 2009. And apparently uh, the government has had the ability to travel in time since 1980. And at the same time, pointing out disinformation, saying that it's not possible, obviously. Like they did with UFOs, and now UFOs, we know. (laughs) In fact, uh, Noah did say we were going to have a lot of UFOs, a lot of sightings, massive sightings. And we have, we have had massive sightings this year. Um, a friend of mine just sent me, um, a picture of these little tiny round, what appear to be ships. And there's like 30 or 40 of them going through the sky. And her friend in Canada recorded it. If I can, I'll try to upload it to my, uh, to my Twitter account. It's a pretty, it's like a 30 second clip, but it's like mind boggling. I've, I've seen it like 10 times and it's still like, whoa. But, um, after they did the, all these, uh, you know, manual labor in the past, they sent them back to 2030, back to the classroom. And they were all given tests for days and days to see where they will fit in the best, what area of research, 
because as time travel, the government wants to know everything about everything. And so out of the topics, um, he got history, but the other topics were study space, outer space, like time traveling to Mars or whatever, um, architecture, political stuff, uh, the future, including aliens, uh, in the past, looking at technology and how it actually developed and also Bitcoin. So, you know, they want to see how that started and how that developed. So in 2030, they're very interested in going back and seeing some stuff that wasn't completely recorded. You know, just, it was like, well, all of a sudden there one day, you know. So they were very, very interested in that. So basically his job was to go back to different historical events, different timelines, or not timelines, but different times, and write down the information that they asked him to write. So it's like a form Here's the questions. And then the information was put into this massive database and the government was gathering information on every event possible, period, (laughs) in relationship to every topic possible, period. (laughs) So that was his job, basically just observe it and report it almost like a security guard of the universe (laughs) security guard of time basically that's all security guards do we observe we report that's it so his very last time travel assignment that he had was to travel to South America and look at the how the Pablo Escobar cartel got started Now, he didn't say where he went to South America, but obviously, if you're going to study Pablo Escobar, you're going to go to the Little Pueblo outside of Medellin, Medellin, Colombia. I know, I've been there. I've been to Pablo Escobar's grave. I love that little town. I love Medellin. In fact, I love Colombia. Colombia is a crazy, wild place that's very oftentimes extremely dangerous, but... Such cool people. Oh my God. The best people in the world. Sweet, loving. Oh my gosh. Beautiful people. So anyway, he was studying the Pablo Escobar cartel. He was, they, he, and he was there with a couple other guys. They were just dressed as travelers and they, um, just, you know, had normal backpacks or staying in a hotel, just normal, very normal looking. And they were done with their assignment. They are getting ready. They had like one more night in the hotel and they decided to go out and they went to a bar and in the bar, his friend and him were standing um, next to each other and he's getting ready to order. And this really super drunk guy, <laughs> you should know about our Medellin. Let me tell you, I like, They start drinking, like, as soon as the breakfast restaurants open up, they offer you whiskey and rum in your coffee. They don't care if you're five years old. They will offer it to you anyway. I mean, the the culture of Medellin specifically is pretty crazy. But anyway, this very, very drunk guy, and there's a lot of drunk people in Medellin. (laughs) When I was there anyway, especially in El Poblado, they were probably in El Poblado, (laughs) Barrio, which is like, kind of where all the tourists go to eat and drink and be merry. Very, 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 very merry. (laughs) I know last time I partied in El Poblado, I was very merry (laughs) in a gay bar. I met these amazing, I met underwear models that were um, a gay couple and they said they like to get drunk and flirt with women. So I all night long was dancing with these guys. It was so amazing. I don't know, just Medellin is a whole nother level of fun. But, so back at the beginning parts of the cartel in the Pablo Escobar days, um, they were they were there. And um, actually, no, he said he started in the beginning of the Pablo Escobar thing, and then he had to go to the end and see the effect of it. So I'm sorry, he got stuck in 2017 so he went to the beginning of that to see how it all started and then he went back to 2030 and then his last assignment was to go to 2017 January 
So literally one year after I was in Medellin, he was in Medellin. I'm like, are you kidding me right now? We probably could have stayed in the same place. But by 2017, January, I was already in Peru. (laughs) So I was like, wait a minute, that's when I was there. Oh my God, maybe I did meet him. No, actually I didn't because he was there one year after I was. So anyway, so in 2017, they were sent to, so I'm sure they were in the Poblada. That's where you go to drink in Medellin at at night. So they were in a bar and this very, very drunk man came up and just randomly punched his friend in the face, his coworker, as hard as he could and knocked him to the ground. And the coworker, and he's like, oh my God, they're not supposed to interact with anybody. They're supposed to keep their heads down, just buy whatever, eat whatever, and then go, right? And so he got up and of course he was just seen red, probably very angry. And he just, he just punched the man in the face as hard as he could, knocked the man to the ground. And then they both, they were like, oh my God, we need to get the hell out of here because we don't want to get caught. We're time travelers. What if we just screwed up a paradox? We just broke a rule. So they freaked out, obviously. And they went back to the hotel, went to sleep. They woke up in the morning and their other coworker was with them saying, okay, so um, you guys are fired and you're done. And they just left him in 2017 <laughs> stranded and which really upset Noah because he said, you know, gosh, you know, I really love my family and I'm never going to see them again, you know, or I will, but in 20 years and it's going to be different because I'm not the me that they know. So it was all pretty crazy. Um, basically, Last year, I think it was last year, when he told Apex TV that he doesn't have much time and he's not going to be able to be around anymore, so he's probably going to go back to the future. He found a way. And then no one heard from him for a while. And what had happened during that time was his friend had come from the future back to get him and is two friends. And they said, well, we've got to go to the year 2120, 2120. And stop and do a job looking at um, flying cars in Las Vegas. And then when we're done with that, we're going to go back to 2030 and you're going to go with us. And so he did. He, he went to the year 2120 and he got um, video footage of flying cars in Las Vegas. And I don't know, before you think that's just too far-fetched that that's not going to happen in 101 years... It, it seems to me it would be extremely commonplace because we're already having cars that drive themselves and uh, Mahler International created a thing called Skycar. Go to skycar.com. It's one of the coolest things ever. They're still working on the prototype of it. And um, yeah, there's some other information about it. I can't even divulge right now, but or ever maybe. But um Anyway, yeah, Mahler Skycar, and there's others. There's other companies right now developing it. So a year from now, I mean a hundred years from now, obviously, it's very, 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 very possible that at the bare minimum there's going to be Skycars in Las Vegas. I mean, actually in Dubai right now, the police are working on drone motorcycles, and there are also drone taxis. So in a way, there already are flying cars, but there are drones that carry people. And it's actually happening in Dubai as I speak now. Like even like a year ago, this was already, everybody knew about it. So to me, it's not far-fetched. That, that part of the story seems extremely likely, actually. And he came back with the video and he showed it to people. He's like, this is Las Vegas in the year 2120. I'm like, yay! That's pretty cool. So basically... They went back to 2030, and because of him divulging information in the past to us, now at this time, part of the timeline, they passed a law, and that made him a traitor. And the people were screaming and yelling at him and calling him a traitor, and um, it really freaked him out. People were, like, grabbing him, beating him up. He was actually taken by some men. They were They chloroformed him. And um, put to put him back to 2030 and interrogated him for hours. 
that was um, even before his friend came to pick him up and interrogate him for hours and then put him back in 2017 and abandon him again. So he's been abandoned in 2017 twice now. <laughs> so he just started divulging as much information as he possibly could. He's like, dude, you guys give me a minimum wage job. You lied to me um, and you abandoned me. So why won't I just tell you, tell everyone in the world everything? So he said goodbye to his pa- his family and told them that he would see them in the future or whatever when he's went in his future. And he came back to 2017 where he would be safe. Or actually, in this case, 2018. So, basically, these are the predictions that he told us, okay? That he told us, meaning the whole wide world. So, he has shown on on the videos, by the way, he did pass a lie detector test. He did show us library books pages that show maps of the U.S. A lot of California is underwater. Um, He showed us the video of 2120. He showed us a time travel cube, which is one way that people uh, time travel in the future, and it's a little um, black cube. And he said he can't really tell us any more than that, but this little, just this little cube, (laughs) it kind of looks like... um, yeah, and it's just a black, it's like a Rubik's cube, but it's really small. And, this, and the sides are very smooth. And it looked to be about an inch and a half tall in every direction, an inch and a half, a perfect cube. He also showed black liquid that was nanotechnology. So he explained that on one of the Apex TV things. He said it was very, very dangerous. He didn't want anyone to know he had it, and he had to hide it in a very special place. And... It was very, very dangerous. He didn't want to create a paradox with that one because he definitely wants this stuff to come out. Technology is incredible in the future, and he doesn't want us to miss out because of his uh, bumbling or bad mistakes. But he said, okay, in 2028, extraterrestrials will arrive in northern Europe. They will land in the UK. They will be in Antarctica and North Asia. And they will be announced worldwide by all world governments, and they will be accepted that they are here nine years from now. Like, we already know they're real, we've all seen their ships, but the governments don't admit it until nine years from now yet. Uh, Martin Luther King's granddaughter, Yolanda Renee King, will become the first 21-year-old president in the year 2030. There, There will be a law that changes, and when that law changes she will become our president and she will become a very loved and liked, very well respected president. And, um, it's, she's very progressive and forward thinking in the year 2030 where he comes from. So when he started time traveling, she was the president. And so, because right now you have to be 35 years old to be, to be president. So, um, there's that. And, Trump, unfortunately, (laughs) if you're listening to this, you're probably with me on this. Trump will become president again. That's pretty much on his timeline. That's what happened. But he said his second term actually did a couple things. Not a lot, but a couple things that actually were significant for humanity and did move us forward. So that's interesting. He also said that North... Korea and South Korea will start a war with each other. North Korea will go back to its old ways. And on the South Korean side will be the United States and Japan. Um, Time travel will be made public in 2028. People will be blown away by that. And we'll be able to start time traveling. And um, it'll be expensive, and then it'll get less and less as the years go by. By the time, you know, 2030 rolls around, pretty much everybody can afford it. It'll be like the equivalent of like $100 or $200, which, I mean, that's like well worth the trip, right? Do I go to the Galapagos or time travel twice? You know what I mean? So, hey. Um, Flying cars will be all over the world. Um... Like I said already, in the year 2,120, 
in the Philippines, um, they converge with what is called ASEAN, like A-S-E-A-N, which is Southeast Asian, all Southeast Asian nations. And that, like literally all of them, I, I'm not going to name them all, but Brunei, Malaysia, Thailand, Japan, Vietnam, they all form this massive conglomerate, kind of like the European Union did. Um, all of Asia will unite and become a powerful force. So that's pretty cool. Um, in the Philippines, um, they found a way to have no more crime and it pretty much stopped overnight. They implemented, um, AI bots as police, artificial intelligence, robots, and it creates a utopia where there's no more crime and everything becomes very, um, wonderful, a really beautiful place to live. And their task force will be, um, all artificial intelligence in Japan. Um, actually the AI will be, um, invented in Japan. And so the first people to implement it will be the Filipino nation, you know, the nation of the Philippines and it it works wonderfully. And that becomes, you know, something that everybody eventually will implement is artificial intelligence for, um, policing areas. So I think that's pretty cool when you think about how AI bots aren't going to be racist and they're not going to want to shoot someone based on the color of their skin. They're just going to look at the actual situation and take the emotion out of it. You know, maybe logic would be the best way possibly. So, um, a huge thing that is implemented in um, the Philippines is there's going to be a brain chip that people get that will make you six times smarter immediately. Kind of like the limitless pill, but it's not a pill, it's just a chip that gets implanted in your brain. And it's invented in India. And throughout the Philippines, they use this brain chip. And it gives you access to pretty much all information, period. The whole internet is instantly accessed by your brain as if it's your own knowledge, but you know where it comes from. So I thought that sounded pretty, a little bit sketchy, like scary, like, oh, I want to see other people have it first, (laughs) you know, before I get it, but I definitely want it. But after I, maybe the second or third generation after they've gotten the bugs out, possibly might be the best way to go about it. Um, there's a hundred and thirty three million people in Mexico in the year 2030, like a lot more than they have right now. Um, They're going to have to start relying on the United States for food and water. There's a crisis in Mexico in the year 2030 with both food and water. The climate change has gotten extremely serious by then, and the rivers are all running pretty thin. In the southern part of the United States, same thing. Food and water crisis, um, very dry, very hot. Not much in way of rivers. They're all starting to dry up. So, uh, (coughs) sorry, Um, there's a huge decline in the rain. The climate change is starting to go to scary levels in the year 2030. So, the United States and Canada join together, they merge and form a big country, a really big country. And in, by the year 2030, Mexico is getting ready to merge with them to be one country. Um, the cartel is gone in Mexico in 2030. That kind of crime is over. It just does not exist any longer. So that's, that was pretty cool. I liked hearing that. Now, Mexico is also run by AI. 
It's an AI called the light. Many countries, by the way, will be running on artificial intelligence. The governments will just be straight up artificial intelligence. Um, now <laughs> I had a dream years ago that an angel took me to the future to show me what was going to, what, what was going to happen, a potential dark future if things don't change. And it looks like a lot of those cha- things have changed, but some of the things are the same. And in, and so I wrote a movie based on the dream, the actual dream that I had. And in the movie that I wrote called state sanctioned movie, you could go watch, I'm sure you could go look at the script and find it for free and download it for free on, um, I don't know. It's on the internet. I, I, I put it up years ago. Eduardo Sanchez was interested in buying it from me. And then the day that he was getting ready to tell me, yay, he found out his wife was pregnant and didn't want to spend the money. Cause he's like, Oh man, I'm broke. And I'm going to just like make a movie with my own script that I wrote. And he decided not to buy one after all, which was such a bummer. But, um, you know, because everyone would have seen state sanctioned movie <laughs> the following year, the movie he made came out you know, from his own script, but in state sanctioned movie, it was basically at the end. Um, they went to see like what was going on with the government. Like why was the government making the decisions it was making, you know, like the, the police were drones and they were, um, arresting people for not um, wearing the right colors, just really insane stuff like that. And they found out it was just one giant central computer running things that had gone awry. So (laughs) this is a movie I made based on literally a dream. An angel told me that that was a potential. So I don't think it's going to be that bad in the future, but in my dream that oceans were dead, um, they were sending old people to retirement camps and it turns out that they were labor camps and it's just, it's dark. It, the stuff I saw was dark, but it's a pretty fun script. Um, I enjoyed it writing it and, um, I might turn it into a book and, and flesh it out as a story and publish it. I'll let you guys know first. If I do, I'll announce it on the show first, <laughs> a pre pre launch, if you will. But, um, So basically Mexico and pretty much most countries are run by AI. AI bots um, in Mexico start taking IDs in stores. So anytime you walk into a store, you have to show them your ID to the AI bot and then they know everything about you in two seconds. And that becomes kind of a privacy issue. People in Mexico are getting a little irritated by that. That's like a little, I mean, I know I would. So, you know, it becomes kind of a thing in the year 2030. In India, in 2030, India is a world superpower. They have their own time travel program that has better technology than the United States. Their tech literally changes the world. They come up with a brain chip that makes you six times smarter and connects you to the internet and you literally know anything and everything you ever wanted to know in a heartbeat. They have a space program and get this. If you are in India, (laughs) you get to live free on Mars. If you want to, they just want to lob as many people off into space as possible because of the overpopulation problem. The United, uh, the United Kingdom is back into the EU. He mentioned this about eight, nine months ago. I think there is talk about them going back into the EU right now, and the Brexit is not happening. Um, so when he said it, no one really knew for sure, but now they do. The EU is a... Oh, actually, he did say this in... Two, th- well, no, it wasn't either. Maybe, I want to say this was in 2019, but in January, but... I think, I don't know. I don't know. I can't remember. I think actually he, that, that video I did look, it was 2019 in January. So they were, you know, Britain, they're still talking about going back in um, the UK. So the UK is back into the EU. The EU becomes one big country. We kind of saw that coming though, right? A big super country. 
they will have um, everyone has a global currency that takes over and we all have one money that's cool one love one people one money we're going into the law of one in the fifth dimension um, he did mention in one of his videos that his family literally is in the fifth dimension so it took a lot of time to get used to gain going into the third dimension and being stuck here and then having to go through that ascension it's got to be pretty hard especially you know although he was born during the third dimension you know and, and went into the ascension by you know with his family so he's not too much out of his timeline you know it's not like they sent him to the 1940s that would have sucked um <laughs> I although also would have been cool too. I mean, the music was pretty fun. Anyway, um global warming is a huge 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 issue in the year 2028. The brain chip is spreading throughout Europe, the European Union. Um it's uh huge and it's like super low price to get it it's super fast easy to get it um, there is a chip that is put into people's right wrist it'll keep you healthy completely healthy it gets rid of most problems and are basically will be able to uh, live to 130 on average but that I did hear from a different time traveler I don't know that Noah said that but Noah did say that there is a chip in the right wrist that keeps us healthy. And in 2028, the aliens land. And they meet with the prime minister and the prince in the United Kingdom. They also land in other places like I've already mentioned. But the extraterrestrials do bring us peace and prosperity. And they are beneficial to humanity. So, in upcoming weeks, um, I'm going to try to do one of these a week, and I'm hoping that we can have a more clear picture of what various time travelers say. If I see one who's passed a lie detector test and seems pretty good, you know, his story seems credible, um, I'm going to have stories. There's a guy named Casper I'm going to do, time traveler Casper, maybe next week, if he has more enough videos and enough information. It's this stuff is very fascinating to me. I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you think that this information from time traveler Noah is real? Flights of fancy, really awesome guesses. I'd love to see India become a world superpower with their technology and everything. I mean, I'm a part of Squad Help, and um, there's a lot of up and coming, amazing companies coming out of India. They're they're looking for cool names futuristic names for tech companies or investment companies or skincare lines or fashion, you name it. Um, squad help is cool. You get to name companies. And I just started this like this past week. I'm not at liberty to tell you who I'm sending names to, or even if they've chosen anything for me, but, um, it's really cool. I like it. <laughs> and I find it very, very interesting, you know, and, but there's a lot of stuff coming out of Singapore, coming out of, uh, you know, the, all the Asian nations, actually. So, I don't know if what he says is true. I could kind of see it. I actually can kind of see it. A lot of intelligent people in India. I've met a lot of people from India that just blew my mind with what they knew. And several people from India told me that marijuana grows like a weed everywhere and no one gives a crap about it. No one ever smokes it. No one thinks to. It's just normal weed. The government hasn't criminalized it, so no one wants it. <laughs> it's just like a no big deal. Pretty crazy stuff, right? All right. Well, that's all I got to say about that tonight. That's all the information I gathered about Time Traveler Noah. Like I said, he's got 10 more hours of videos. I obviously didn't have time to watch today. And as I watch him, I'm going to take more and more notes see if he says anything new beyond what I've already said. And if he does, I will do another Time Traveler Noah episode. Otherwise, I'm going to get, just get into uh, talking about what other time travelers say. And then you guys can compare and contrast and see what you think. Again, always use discernment. Don't just believe anybody. 
take everything with a grain of salt? I know I do. I would love some of these changes to happen. You know, lack of crime would be nice. AI bots, I don't know. <laughs> Being six times smarter would be freaking great. Um, but a drought that puts us in jeopardy in parts of the world? Not so crazy about that. Overpopulation? Not so crazy about that. Hilarious that India is sending people to Mars for free. <laughs> so I don't know. If you want to go to Mars, you know, in 2030, <laughs> maybe go to India and ask the government. They'll probably lob you off into space. That'd be fun. Not lop you. Lob. <laughs> Two totally different things. Well, if all... <laughs> Yeah, you never mind. Too many jokes. Too little time. I love you guys very much. Feel free to write me at Mermaid Girl. I mean, I'm sorry. If, uh, I keep saying the wrong one. Mermaid Girl 888 is my handle on Twitter and also Instagram. Metaphysical Soul Speak at gmail.com is how you get in touch with me. And anchor.fm forward slash metaphysical is how you can send me a voice message if you want me to play it on the air. So now I'm signing off with peace and joy and the high vibes of the fifth, holy fifth dimension. Until next time. Metaphysical Soul Speak is run on sponsors and listener support. This means listeners like you. If you are so inclined to support my efforts and my little podcast, please visit me at anchor.fm forward slash metaphysical and pledge an amount of your choosing today. Thank you.